If the Green Bay Packers trade for David Njoku, well, then they just need a guy whose last name sounds like Vegeta. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. <gasps> the, the puppy picture came in. The puppy picture. Yeah, so months ago, we uh, we raised money to name a puppy uh, for a Minnesota charity, Can Do Canines, and, and we named it Lambo. And, the, and, the, and it's in. And the puppy's adorable. And he's perfect. And he's a puppy. Grassy, and today we are going to do a highly, highly requested story uh, that started really on Friday about the Packers potentially going after David Njoku. Before we get to that, I want to do a big shout-out and thank you to some brand-new patrons and YouTube members. First, we got Tenor Mike 3 up in his subscription to $10 roast, getting his name in the credits. Thank you, Tenor Mike. Then we... We got Vikings NFC North Champs 2020. Turn off Madden. Then we got get Aaron to play for the Bears. I really got to stop doing shout outs. Then we got Grimes 52 and Mike Ding Sheriff. Thank you all very much. Well, most of you for becoming patrons over at patreon.com slash Tom Grassy County. And a big shout out and thank you to some brand new YouTube members. We got Bernardo Gonzalez, Safono, Safono PayPal, Safono Fortnite, and Peeny Tiny. P- appreciate that. That's all the same person. We got Evil God. We got Mike. You know what you did. And we got Shylon Pylon. Thank you all very much for the support. It is much appreciated. So David Njoku, I probably would have been more open to this trade if it was two years ago. Because not only in 2018 did David Njoku have his best season thus far, but I would have argued that there was a pretty big need for tight end for the Green Bay Packers. I know we were in the midst of the Jimmy Graham experiment, but how did that work out? But let's take a look and see if he could still be utilized in 2020 by the Packers. He's a former first round pick, and the guy has all the talent in the world, right? It's just raw potential. The guy is 6'4", 246 pounds, and he's only going to turn 24 in literally four days. So the guy is still in getting to the precipice of the prime of his career. His agent came out uh, last week saying it's in David's best interest to find a new team at this time, which is not that much of a surprise, considering that the Browns went after Austin Hooper and gave him a whole lot of money and was like, there you go. Take it. And so this leaves David Njoku kind of out in the cold. Even though the Browns have said that they still have plans to utilize him, I think Njoku just wants to be a tight end one wherever he is. And with Hooper coming in, getting that money, he's obviously not going to be. Now, I mentioned 2018, he had 56 receptions, 639 yards, and four TDs. Guy was a great red zone target, and he brings a lot of speed as a bigger guy. He's definitely not there for blocking. No, that, that's that's not the case at all. But he could be a threat in the red zone, which right there, right at that exact moment, all the bells and whistles and red flags should be going up. And wait a minute, isn't that what was said about Jimmy Graham? Yup. However, the big difference is is that Jimmy Graham was in the twilight or sunset of his career, while Ninjoku is just getting his started. So there's obviously some big differences here. And on top of that, Ninjoku's still on his rookie contract. This year, he's going to be about a cap hit of about $3 million, and his fifth-year extension is going to be about $6 million. So if the Packers were to take a flyer on him, it wouldn't cost that much. They could probably move some money around. I know still we got to re-sign Kenny Clark. But if the Packers wanted to pull the trigger, theoretically, they probably could. One of the big questions, however, though, is how much it's going to cost to obtain him. Are the Browns just going to let him go? Because I think if you're the Browns, 
you really have no incentive to trade him unless he's threatening to sit out for two years. Because if you look at it from their standpoint, they still have a very young, talented tight end. They could run two tight end sets in which they have Hooper and Njoku together, and they can just wait out the rest of his contract. So I would think the Browns are going to want something in the realm of maybe a third or fourth round pick. Now, if they want anything higher than that, like a first or a second, I say there's no way that the Packers dip their toe in that water. However, considering the Packers have some comp picks that are coming up this year, maybe they decide to delve into it. Now, that being said, we also did just spend two third round picks on two tight ends in the past two drafts, going and get Jay Sternberger last year, and this from this year's draft, we went Josiah DeGuerra. So if you look at what we already have on the team, you have Mercedes Lewis, who's obviously there to be a blocker. Then you have Robert Tanyan, who, who knows if he's going to make the team, is untested. You have Jay Sternberger, who, in my opinion, is going to be our tight end one, showed his ability to block last year, and I think can be a huge threat in the passing game. And then you have Josiah DeGuerra, who could do a bit of both but primarily seems to be great for blocking schemes. So at the end of the day, the real question becomes, are the Green Bay Packers willing to wait? Are they willing to kind of say, okay, we're going to put all of our money on one of these tight ends, right? Most likely being Jay Sternberger or Josiah DeGuerra, who is going to be our pass threat. And I think the Packers are going to go that route. And I kind of agree with it. We've already spent some pretty decent draft capital on tight ends in the past two drafts. And it kind of seemed like... And it kind of seems that it would be a little bit of a waste and a bit short-sighted for us to bring a guy in for the two years. And while he could help the team, I'm not arguing that, you also could have guys that are already on the team that are going to cost a lot less money immediately make an impact. Now, the position of tight end is one that usually takes some adjustment. There's very few tight ends that come in in their first year and make an immediate impact on the team. Obviously, Jay Sternberger... Obviously, Jay Sternberger coming into his second year, I think Matt LaFleur is going to be utilizing him a whole lot more, and I think he's going to be able to strut his stuff. Now, that being said, if it doesn't work out, we still have guys waiting in the wing like DeGuerra. So I think for me personally, yes, it's not the most risky maneuver if we don't have to give up a whole lot to the Browns to get him, but I think we also have a pretty solid tight end core. And while guys like Mercedes Lewis are probably not going to be on the team forever and guys like Robert Tanyan might not make the team this year, we have two up and coming tight ends and I think it's only fair to give them a shot. But I understand fans kind of hesitancy saying, okay, you know, that's what we've kind of been waiting for wide receiver and that really hasn't happened a whole lot. And that might be the case with tight end here, but I feel like the Packers are going to be more on the wait and see level. I also think at the other hand, I also think, on the other hand, you're going to have teams that are going to be willing to shell out more for Ninjoku than the Packers. You have teams like the Redskins because Jordan Reed didn't work out. You have the Cardinals. You have teams like the Dolphins or the Panthers, (laughs) the Bears. (laughs) Come on, guys, just bring in 13 tight ends. It's, It's fine. So if it turns out to be kind of a bidding war between these teams when it comes to giving up draft picks, I don't think that's going to be worth it, and I don't think the Packers are going to throw their hat into the ring. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think it'd be worth it to go after Ninjoku? We could get a speedster who is a red zone threat or do we wait on guys like Sternberger and DeGuerra and see where we end up let me know what you think you can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy on social media see down below check out podcasts on SoundCloud iTunes Google Play Music Spotify and of course the YouTubes and a big shout out and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy and the YouTube members but thanks so much for watching I'm Tom Grassy and as always Go Pack Go Go <laughs>